Version 2 of Stick Motion Animation includes quite a few changes and in some cases existing functionality has been completely redesigned to make animating easier. But if you've been using Stick Motion for a long time, or perhaps if you've been looking through the tutorials for some of the earlier versions, then you might be left a little confused. So here's a quick look at all of the major changes in version 2. Let's start with the figure editor. In previous versions of Stick Motion, sliders were used to adjust the images within figures. In Stick Motion version 2, the sliders have been removed. Instead, a spanner button will appear whenever an image is selected. Press this button to adjust the item. To adjust the angle of the item, simply move the rotation slider left and right. To set the angle more precisely, you can also tap on the rotation button to bring up the rotation adjustment overlay. The image can also be flipped by pressing the button at the bottom left corner of the screen. Unlike earlier versions of stick motion, the position of the image may be adjusted by dragging it around with your finger. So there's no longer a limitation on how far images may be moved. Finally, two fingers may now be used to enlarge or reduce the size of the image as well. And if you make a mistake, press the orange rollback button to undo your changes. Alternatively, you can press the cross button to discard any changes and return back to the figure editor. So let's quickly enlarge the face and then press the tick button to accept the changes. Now it had been quite difficult to change the angle of items within a figure without also adjusting their size. So the testing functionality has now been enhanced such that the position of items may be retained. The way in which items are adjusted whilst animating has also changed and matches the way it's done in the figure editor. So unlike earlier versions of stick motion, it is now possible to animate item rotations, flips, size changes and movements. There used to be a dedicated button to delete a figure located at the bottom left of the screen. This functionality is now moved to the Options menu, where all of the other removal functions may be found. The colour, or tint popover, has undergone a complete makeover. Let's take a look at applying a tint to an astronaut. By default, Stick Motion now displays a colour swatch instead of the red, green and blue colour sliders. So changing the tint of a figure is as easy as dragging your finger over the swatch. You can also choose a lighter version of the currently selected colour by sliding your finger over the gradient that appears below the colour swatch. Of course, if you like the colour sliders, they're still in there. Stick Motion version 2 not only provides a lot more sound effects, it also makes it easier to find and organise your audio assets. Choose a letter to see the files that start with that letter, or select the dash to see all of the files in the given category. And it is now even easier to go into edit mode and select multiple files in order to move them into a different category or delete them. The frame audio options have also been enhanced and now it's possible to fade audio both in and out. As with the audio assets, improvements have been made to the way in which image assets are handled as well. Image assets may now be named, making it possible to quickly locate them by letter. The new edit mode also allows multiple images to be selected and then moved or deleted. In earlier versions of Stick Motion, it was only possible to export to the camera roll or send your figures to friends via email. Stick Motion 2.0 now provides full access to the iOS sharing options for figures frame images or the videos that you create. The stop motion camera has now been fully integrated into the animation screen. Press the camera button to invoke it and then tap anywhere on the display to focus. It's now easier than ever to combine stop motion animation with stick figure or cutout style animation. 
New settings may now be found within the options menu to control the way in which stop motion frames are captured, along with the orientation of the camera. Yes, you can shoot upside down images if you really want to. And if you really don't like the brand new colour scheme, you can change the accent colour from the project screen. Now this has been a really quick overview of the Stick Motion version 2 changes. If you'd like to find out more, or anything at all about animating in Stick Motion, check out the new help system. There's well over a hundred pages of information there, organised into a range of topics for quick and easy access.